Good afternoon. I'm Alec Bath, Wireless Applications Manager for Microcontroller Products in the Americas. I'm coming to you from my basement home office laboratory lair, staying safe, practicing good social distancing, and I hope that you're doing the same in these trying times. There's so many interesting topics to discuss when it comes to the STM32WB microcontroller family. So many different wireless protocols, cube ecosystem tools, all the great peripherals. And unfortunately, we only have about 45 minutes to share with you. So we'll do our best. And I hope to see you in person soon at a workshop near you. Cheers. Hello there. My name is Colin Ramratin. I'm one of the product marketing engineers in the Americas region representing STM32 products. I will present a portion of this webinar and I'll hand it back over to Alec for the remaining of the webinar. Let's talk a bit about the variety of digital communication technologies that exist today. We can consider four main trade-offs, data rate, range, current consumption, and cost. Bluetooth LE has a medium data rate, somewhat short range, which can be extended with long range Bluetooth LE, but is very low power, low cost, and easy to use. LP WAN technologies like LoRa and Sigfox have very long range and low power, but the data rate is extremely low, and a gateway is necessary to connect your data to the backend IP type network. Celio Chile is medium to high power and traditionally a higher cost, but has the advantage of using already deployed cellular networks for connectivity. ST has a solution for all of these communication technologies through our STM32 portfolio or partner programs. At ST Micro, we have a multi tier strategy to address Bluetooth LE applications. The Blue Energy MS is an older design that is a network processor, meaning that it requires a host MCU to run the upper application layers of the stack and your end application program. The Blue Energy Dash 1 and Dash 2 are Cortex M0 based single core application processors meant for simple Bluetooth LE applications. The Blue Energy LP will come later this year and bumps up the radio performance, memory sizes, and adds some new Bluetooth LE 5.0 features to the portfolio. Today we will focus on the STM32WB, a dual core multi-protocol application processor. Taking a look at the 2.4 gigahertz wireless market that excludes Wi-Fi, we see the following applications, wearable and small applications, proprietary applications, and MESS applications. To address the wearable and small Bluetooth LE applications, we have both the Blue Energy and the STM32WB series that can address these applications. When we speak about proprietary, we reference low latency applications that do not require the full Bluetooth LE communication exchange. This is served by both the Blue Energy and the STM32WB series. Bluetooth Mesh, created by the Bluetooth SIG, is served with any device that is at least Bluetooth 4.0 compatible. The Blue Energy and the STM32WB series serve this area with full, complete interoperability between each other. Thread and Zigbee applications are addressed by the STM32WB as it embeds an 802.15.4 MAC layer. With all of these applications considered, ST has a solution for all your Bluetooth needs. ST has the largest selection of general purpose microcontrollers across all silicon manufacturers. We currently have over 1,600 part numbers in our total portfolio. We segment all of our series of products into different categories. In the high performance line of MCUs, we have Cortex M3, M4, and M7 MCUs. In the M7 MCUs, we have dual core options as well. These devices have high performance in mind with HMI applications considered and connectivity such as Ethernet, CAN, USB, and other interfaces included. This does not exclude any other low-cost versions of MCUs to have these interfaces, but typically you'll find more options available in our high-performance line of MCUs. In the mainstream performance products, we have a solution for every Cortex-M family. These devices strike a balance of analog, digital, and performance while being cost-effective. In the ultra-low power MCU products family, we have a solution for all Cortex-M families. Even though we do not show a specific M7 in ultra-low power, our stm 32 h family can achieve current consumption that matches our ultra-low power Cortex-M0 Plus and M3 family of products. In this family of devices, we also include features such as embedded WEPROM, 
flex power control, capacitive touch IP, and segment LCD display control. In the wireless MCU family, we have our STM32WO sub gigahertz SOC, which is the world's first LoRa SOC. Next, we have the STM32WB Bluetooth LE multi protocol SOC. As with all of our MCU product families, ST offers a 10-year longevity commitment. We renew this commitment every calendar year. Now let's take a closer look at the STM32WE, which is truly a very unique Bluetooth LE SOC. We have integrated our industry-leading STM32L4 MCU with our Bluetooth LE 5.0 radio to create our STM32WB. We will look at the specific details on how we integrate peripherals and components to reduce PCB size and bomb cost in the later slide. Looking at the STM32WB, there are four key messages we want you to take away from this webinar. The STM32WB is multi-protocol capable, where we can achieve Bluetooth 5.0, open thread, Zigbee, and 802.15.4 protocols with one SOC. The STM32WB is dual core, allowing for the lowest possible power while maintaining Bluetooth LE connections. It is even lower when the devices are placed in the lowest possible power modes. With this dual core approach, we have the ability to provide security to any end application through secure OTA updates or through secure boot and secure firmware upgrade. In terms of ecosystem, the STM32WB has been added to our already extensive and world-class ecosystem. Alec will go into more details on this later in the webinar. Now let's have a closer look at the multi-protocol capability of the STM32WB. We have full Bluetooth LE 5.0 certification with the Bluetooth SIG, offering a two megabit per second and extended data rate radio features. We are fully compliant to the Bluetooth mesh standard, which runs on top of Bluetooth LE. We offer a fully certified ZigBee 3.0 stack, which is available now. In terms of thread, we have thread certification on the STM32WB with open thread examples provided in our ecosystem. We will also be introducing concurrent Bluetooth LE plus ZigBee 3.0 in Q2 of this year, and concurrent Bluetooth LE plus open dot thread in Q4 of this year. Alec will speak more about what concurrent mode means later in the webinar. We have 802.15.4 based APIs that a customer can use to create their own proprietary protocols. Inside the STM32WB, we have two separate MAC hardware, which allows for flexibility in both communication and power savings. With this approach, the communication for each interface is truly independent. Both these MACs are controlled through the Cortex M0 Plus MCU, which offloads this task from your application. In January 2020, the Zigbee Alliance Board announced that ST has joined the Board of Directors of the Zigbee Alliance. With this addition to the Board, this solidifies ST's commitment to the Zigbee ecosystem and framework. We provides a fully certified Zigbee 3.0 stack to our customers. With this stack, we support legacy and custom clusters from revisions R21 today through R23. We have passed both platform and application Zigbee certifications on the STM32WB. We currently have examples for a simple Zigbee network in our ecosystem, which Alec will speak more about later in the webinar. Bluetooth Mesh has gained adoption in the connected lighting applications. The STM32WB has examples and will be certified shortly through the Bluetooth SIG with Bluetooth Mesh. ST has been contributor to the Bluetooth SIG Mesh group since its creation. We offer examples of how to set up and use Bluetooth Mesh as well as an iOS and Android app that can be used to configure and control the Bluetooth Mesh. Taking a closer look at Bluetooth Mesh, it has a few key points that are unique to Mesh standards. It is based on Bluetooth 4.0 and later. This means that most devices today with Bluetooth LE can be configured to join and operate on a Bluetooth Mesh network. It uses a broadcast type Mesh network with managed planning protocol. There is currently no routing tables held at any Bluetooth LE device. With broadcast type approach, it is self-healing, which means nodes can be added or taken away, and the network adjusts accordingly. One of the biggest features of the Bluetooth mesh is that a smartphone can join the network for configuration or control. This is a big plus for most users, as there is no need for an 802.15.4 
or gateway to Bluetooth device required for Bluetooth mesh. Thread being the standard and OpenThread being the implementation is available on the STM32WB. Thread was developed by Google and has its own working group and consortium. It is targeted but not limited to home automation application. Thread is based on IPv6 and utilizes the 802.15.4 Mac to communicate. This is a true routing table approach that is self-healing. The PHY data rate is 250 kilobits per second and the application data rate is lower with appropriate packetization. Thread, as seen today, is theoretically capable of large networks. ST now has a complete ZigBee solution which can serve all parts of a ZigBee network. We can function as coordinator, router, or end device. As long as it is defined in the ZigBee 3.0 spec, the STM32WB can serve that role. ZigBee networks hold an internal routing table and are self-healing. They can change channels on the fly to reduce interference and with retry mechanisms, they can handle noise in the system. With our current ZigBee stack, there has been a 700 node deployment in one mesh network. With additional coordinators, this can be dramatically increased in size. Using the 802.15.4 radio with appropriate RF front end designs, we can achieve a point-to-point -point range of 100 meters. The STM32WB portfolio offers flash and RAM and package options for every application. As we have offered in the past, devices with the same package type are fully compatible no matter the flash and RAM size. We have most GPIO in the smallest package today in the market with a BGA129 offering 72 GPIO. Recently, we have introduced an STM32WB value line, which includes dude core high performance with reduced cost. Let's have a closer look at the IP blocks for each WB series. Besides having a best-in-class multi-protocol radio with outstanding transmit and receive power numbers and sensitivity, the WB has a great microcontroller features inherited from our STM32L4 family. As with all of our parts in our STM32WB family, we embed a balance filter to reduce PCB cost. Lots of wire connectivity with multiple SPI, I2C, UARTs, full-speed USB, an execute-in-place quad spy interface, and a serial audio interface for direct connection to popular codecs and MEMS microphones. We support capacitive touch buttons. We can interface to a small segment type LCD, such as a metering LCD. It has a fast 12-bit ADC with two comparators, lots of timers, including a motor control timer, which is useful for connected cordless tools, which are becoming very popular. There are multiple encryption engines, some used by the stack and some available for your application. Lots of GPIO, lots of DMA, and a multitude of low power modes and a special low-power peripheral, and of course, our dual-core architecture. An integrated SMPS ensures that that power consumption is kept to a minimum. The 32 megahertz R Cortex M0 Plus is dedicated to running the radio stack, or stacks running in concurrent mode. It spends most of its time halted, waiting for either the radio IP or the application MCU to wake it up. The ARM Cortex M4, with single precision floating point unit, is running your application and the upper application layers of the various stacks up to 64 megahertz. Because of this, the efficiencies of this dual core architecture, most applications typically require 32 megahertz for the M4 application processor. This allows for dynamic power consumption savings and longer battery life. Besides having horsepower and the plenty of memory, one megabyte of flash and 256K of SRAM, and we'll take a look at how these memory blocks are integrated and intelligently managed, secured, and partitioned between the two cores. There's also multiple package options, whether you need an easy-to-solder QFN or a super small high pinout count CSP or BGA package. The latest introduction to the STM32WB family is the STM32WB50 value line. ST developed this line with cost in mind by removing some of the peripherals that may not be used in cost-sensitive applications. We have kept the dual-core architecture and the power modes that allow for low power operation. In the value line, the radio sensitivity is kept the same, but the data rate is reduced to one megabit per second. We kept the integrated balance filter for bomb reduction. The output power is reduced to plus four dBm. Power modes are kept the same, however, there is no internal SMPS, which leads to a slight increase in current consumption at higher VDD levels. We have kept most of the GPIO timer analog peripherals the same, but reduced the amount accordingly. The segment LCD IP and the USB blocks have been removed to reduce cost. 
The temperature range is limited to minus 10 to plus 85, and there is only one package type available in QFN48. Other changes mentioned to the WB50, it's still fully code compatible with applications built for the WB55 as the internal dual core architecture is maintained. Now I will hand it over to Alec for the remainder of the webinar. Guys, enjoy this, the webinar with Alec, and I'll be back at the end of the webinar to take your questions. As Colin has discussed, while STM32WB is a dual core architecture, it is in fact built around four different clock domains. First, we have our radio subsystem, consisting of two media access controllers for BLE and 802.15.4 based protocols, its own encryption hardware, internal clock structures, and state machines. There is our application processor, the Cortex M4, which we also refer to as CPU1. There is also CPU2, our Cortex M0 Plus core, which manages commands and responses from both CPU1 as well as our smart radio domain and is running the associated stacks for Bluetooth Low Energy or 15.4. Now, for any of these three subsystems to operate, we will also require some shared resources. Shown here is our common run domain, consisting mainly of memory resources, clock sources, and the power controller. This has ramifications for going into one of the multitude of deep sleep modes the WB supports, as we'll need to wait for requests from all three subsystems to finish. Here we see an overview of the shared memory partitioning of Flash and SRAM. These lines in the sand are set when a particular stack is loaded onto the WB. Some stacks require more resources than others. We'll discuss stack loading a bit more in future slides. The secure non-volatile flash regions and volatile SRAM2 regions shown in red are only accessible by the M0 Plus core and cannot be read by the user. The non-secure regions of SRAM2A and SRAM2B are used as a mailbox region used to pass data structures between the two cores. More on that in the next slide. The difference between SRAM2A and SRAM2B is that in our very deep standby low power mode, the 32K byte SRAM 2A block can be maintained, keeping some volatile application context. The large 192K byte SRAM 1 area is not secured and completely available for our M4 based application. Certain peripherals related to encryption are also locked down at runtime to protect secret key information and so forth, and only acceptable by the M0 plus stack. They're shown on the right. The IPCC or Interprocessor Communication Controller in conjunction with the SRAM2 region we discussed previously is what manages shared resources between our Cortex-M4 application core and our M0 Plus stack. When our M4 has a message to send to the stack, it will write the pointer to a register in the IPCC, which generates an interrupt on the M0 Plus side. It will then use that pointer to fetch the data structure out of SRAM2 and vice versa, and send a response back to the M4. Another useful peripheral is the hardware semaphore, which will prevent shared resource access conflicts, similar to what's used in real-time operating systems. Now, you may be wondering, since I have two cores fetching instructions and only a single flashbang structure, how is that managed? So what we've done on the WB is taken our best-in-class adaptive real-time, or ART, flash accelerator, that we've been using for years in other STM32 families, and essentially doubled it. As the physical flash array is 64 bits wide, shown on the right, we can fetch up to four thumb two instructions at a time. We then use the prefetch buffer, pipeline these instructions to the appropriate core. When we have a jump to a subroutine or interrupt, which clears this pipeline, we can utilize the instruction caches dedicated to each core, quickly refill the pipe on a cache match, and go about our business. 
There are also dedicated data caches for fetching array of constant data, which operate in a similar fashion. This round robin shared memory model has been benchmarked versus dedicated flash memories. And the M4 performance loss is only 1.3%. The M0 plus core is negligible, about 0.15% loss. Let's take a look back at memory partitioning. Here's an example of our heart rate monitor application, which takes only about 16 K bytes in our blue non-secure application space at the bottom. In the red in our secure region, is our firmware upgrade services and Bluetooth low energy radio stack. The firmware upgrade service or FUS includes the root security service, a safe boot region, customer key storage, which take about 40 K bytes, and our Bluetooth low LE stack is about 172 K bytes. We'll discuss firmware upgrade services in a bit more detail in some upcoming slides. Now here's an example of an application running both BLE and thread services in what we call static and current mode. We see the stack required is significantly larger, consuming about half of the flash. However, with a large one megabyte flash on the WB, we still have about 484 K bytes free here, and plenty of SRAM1 resources available. We've previously discussed the IPCC mailbox system and the multiple subsystems in the WB. Here's how each relates to the Bluetooth low energy protocol stack layers. And we won't have time to delve into the inner workings of BLE today, but if you're already familiar with the protocol, these blocks will be familiar to you. The radio phi, obviously part of the radio domain, or gap gat, L2 cap, and link layer, blocks, part of our M0 plus domain, our mailbox system we discussed, and then on the, on the top, the different BLE profiles and services, the application controller interface, pass that data back and forth, and our application layer. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Bluetooth Low Energy, here are three great reads. Robin's book on the left, kind of the Bible on Bluetooth low energy, but a bit dated. Robin, please give us an update. The middle book is a good read, covers some features of 4.1. And Muhammad's book on the right includes some of the newer details on Bluetooth 5.0 and also an introduction to mesh. I would also recommend you head on over to bluetooth.com, download the latest 5.0 specification, perhaps some of the profiles and service documents to understand how those work. And a few other words on the Bluetooth special interest group. Membership is required in order to acquire a license to build products using Bluetooth technology. SIG membership is required in order to use Bluetooth trademarks on your qualified products. And membership is required in order to gain access to working documents, test tools, and participate in a multitude of working groups. The good news is that becoming a member at the adopter level is free. So head on over to Bluetooth.com and check it out. Now let's grab another cup of coffee, dig back into the STM32WB's bus matrix. Similar to other STM32 products, we have a number of bus masters and bus slaves. And now we have not only our Cortex M4F bus master shown at the top left, we also have our M0 plus bus master, as well as our radio subsystem and two DMA controllers. These managed bus slaves are flash with the corresponding art flash accelerator, are two blocks of SRAM, AHB buses that interface to a multitude of peripherals, and our quad spy interface, which can also execute in place. Any of the dots shown are interfaces where we can have simultaneous accesses between any of the bus masters and bus slaves, as long as those dots don't intersect the same peripheral we're trying to access. 
As with other STM32s, the WB has multiple power rails. In most use cases, many of these are tied together and run off a single voltage source, typically 3.3 volts. These separate power rails do offer some unique capabilities, however, such as running our VDD at 1.8 volts and supplying the USB transceivers with 3.3 volts required by the USB spec. We also have our new switch mode power supply shown in yellow, which can be dynamically switched on and off at runtime to supply our digital IP, the V core shown in pink, which typically runs at one volt. When our VDD supply is above two volts, this offers a more efficient runtime power solution, which you'll see in the power numbers. And there's no measurable degradation of radio performance using the SMPS. If you wish to use the SMPS to gain some power efficiencies, there's just three components you'll need to add, an inductor and a couple of 4.7 microfarad bulk capacitors. If you don't need them, you can save a little bomb cost by re removing them. Although there are many more low power modes than those that are detailed here, these are some of the more common ones. With our WB up and running, we are drawing just 53 microamps per megahertz. Halting the core but allowing the peripherals and clocks to continue running drops this to 41 microamps per megahertz. Stop two is our recommended sweet spot for low power applications. Consuming just two microamps, very fast five microsecond wake up time, it keeps full context of your application and stack, be it a BLE connection or other. With standby and shutdown, we're down into the nanoamps and still have the capability to wake via an RTC event or several GPIO transitions. In VBAT mode, our VDD power rail is completely removed from the WB, and the RTC is kept running via coin cell or super cap typically. The ultra low power and high performance coming from the bloodlines of the STM32L4 result in best in class embassy benchmarks. The WB's clock tree is shown here. It's quite flexible and powerful. There are two external clock sources, three internal ones. There are multiple PLLs for USB, audio, and all of our peripherals, a dozen prescalers. It can make setting up the clock seem like a daunting challenge. Thankfully, we'll touch on some great free tools shortly, part of our Cube ecosystem to ease this burden. Let's switch gears now and touch on some hardware bits. In a basic RF system, we can consider three main components between our RF transceiver and our antenna shown on the right. A ballon to combine our transmitter and receive signals into a single pin, a matching network to transform that impedance into 50 ohms, ideally what our antenna wants to see, and a harmonic filter to reduce our out-of-band harmonics coming from our transmitter and those seen by our receiver. Now the balance functionality is integrated inside the WB. And STE has come out with a family of devices specifically matched to different wireless families, such as Blue Energy and the WB, with specific variants for different packages, accurately match those RF characteristics or harmonic filtering and impedance matching. This is what we call the IPD device. It integrates a large number of discrete components into a single tiny one millimeter by 1.6 millimeter GSP package device. Our app note AN5165 details the part numbers for these IPD filters. And within the IPD data sheet, detailed PCB layout recommendations are given. One of the other required components needed in our WB radio subsystem is an accurate 32 megahertz clock that is used to generate our 2.4 gigahertz carrier. However, there is no requirement for an expensive TCXO oscillator. And in fact, on the WB, the load capacitor is typically found around a crystal to pop properly stabilize and tune it are also not necessary. The WB incorporates an integrated load capacitor bank and associated registers that can be loaded at runtime to dial in the 32 megahertz frequency, 
with values stored during factory test. AN 5042 details the procedure, which is quite easy. So with our STM32WB and antenna, our IPD matching filter, a couple of simple crystals, optional SMPS circuitry, and a couple of decoupling caps, we have everything we need for our wireless system. When we talk about the Internet of Things connected devices, especially those connect communicating wirelessly, no discussion is complete without mentioning security. We can break the attacks and associated countermeasures down into two camps, non-invasive hardware attacks and software attacks. Non-invasive hardware attacks include overheating or deep freezing the device, affecting the input voltage, or the clock inputs to create faults. And some of the WB's countermeasures include the ADC temperature sensor, multiple power supply monitoring hardware, including power on reset, brownout reset, programmable voltage detectors, and a clock security system. There are also a variety of protections on the flash and SRAM memories, some of which we have already seen, but also error code correction on the flash and parity check on that shared SRAM2. Also, a variety of selectable readout and write protections which have capabilities to mass erase the SRAM, disable the debug channel, and limit the bootable modes to flash only. On the software attack side, we employ countermeasures including secure storage of customer keys, multiple AES hardware accelerators, hardware random jump number generator, CRC calculation unit, secure firmware update, and many other features. AN5156 further details the many security features of the WB and security topics to consider in general. To get started with the WB, this two-board Nucleo pack is just a ticket. The WB Nucleo board includes the QFN68 variant of the WB, buttons and LEDs, an onboard PCB antenna, Arduino headers for adding sensor shields and the like, and an ST-Link debugger. There's also an SDR2032 coin cell on the back for powering the board standalone. What we call our WB dongle board has similar functionality, but, but does not an inc include an onboard debugger. It is quite simple, however, to add some flying wires to the Nucleo board and scavenge its debug capabilities. You can also use QProgrammer, which we'll discuss shortly, to program binary files onto this dongle board via USB bootloader mode. For performing wired RF testing, the dongle board also includes a small UFL connector, and the Nucleo board has pads for mounting an SMA connector, bypassing the PCB trace antennas on both. Let's switch gears now and talk about how our free STM32Q-based ecosystem components in conjunction with our WB Nucleo kit are used to quickly configure, code, test, and measure your next wireless creation. There's been many great updates to all of these tools since we last talked, so let's take a look. As you probably know, QMX has been wildly successful and is widely used with all STM32 microcontrollers for pinout and peripheral configuration, clock setup, decode generation, power consumption estimation, and other useful tools. There's also a WB specific section for Bluetooth low energy configuration of standard roles. With a live cloud connected MCU selector and lots of filters, it's quick and easy to narrow down your part selection from our 1600 plus STM32 SKUs. You can even filter by evaluation board type. If your first design is Nucleo board based, using this board selection option will quickly configure all of the switches, LEDs, and UART already used. A nice time saver. The intuitive clock configuration util flag any clock violation errors you make and give useful suggestions. There is also a WB specific section for configuration of standard Bluetooth low energy 
and thread rolls, this feature continues to grow in functionality with each new release. So check and upgrade often. The power consumption calculator tool is great for profiling different power consumption use cases for your battery powered wireless creation. When your configuration is complete, it's time to build your IDE project template and generate initialization code. There are several popular tool chains to choose from as your target. Now, for those of you that prefer a GCC-based tool chain and Eclipse development environment, we now offer Cube IDE, which integrates all of the aforementioned Cube MX configuration utilities in one perspective, and the Eclipse-based C compiler and GDB debug tools in another. You can switch back and forth on the fly. There are also a number of utilities for quickly importing other GCC-based projects into Cube IDE. Next up is Cube Programmer, which offers all the standard flash programming and erase functions that you would expect. Reading and configuring option bytes, examining memory maps, and now includes a new WB-specific radio button for loading or upgrading your encrypted wireless stack. This was previously a clunky, clunky command line option, but now it's fast and easy. Elpotronic and others are also now offering gang programming support to their WB, including stack programming, external flash programming, serialization and other features. The Cube Monitor RF tool, in conjunction with our transparent mode Cube WB firmware project seen on the top, turns your Nucleo or dongle board into a powerful RF testing tool. Cube Monitor RF offers access to the full suite of application and hardware control interface layers of the BLE stack, as well as the 15.4 based protocols. You can configure your WB device for connectable and non connectable advertising, a beacon, and send simple script based command sequences. All of the direct test mode commands needed to pass Bluetooth certification are included in the RF tests portion. New features and protocol support continue to be added to Cube Monitor RF, so be sure to upgrade this tool often as well. All available at ST.com. STM32 Cube Monitor, not to be confused with STM32 Cube Monitor RF, is a brand new Node-RED flow-based tool for re real-time variable debug. There's all kinds of fun new gauges, bar graphs, and other widgets to profile your application. Now, because it's so new, I'm not so familiar with this tool yet, but if you're a Node-RED junkie, you're gonna love this new tool. Now, most applications will run QMonitor locally, but you can also use a web browser if you have the IP address of the host PC to run QMonitor remotely as well. Finally, we come to the Cube WB firmware library. The number of examples with each new release continues to grow and grow. For Bluetooth Low Energy, we've added some new examples for doing over-the-air firmware updates. Our example called Peripheral Light, which is a very stripped down version without the timer server and sequencer typically found in other examples. A full suite of Zigbee examples, both BLE plus Zigbee concurrent mode and or BLE plus thread concurrent mode examples, more thread examples, more open Mac 15.4 examples. And like our standard STM32 offerings, there's dozens and dozens of standard peripheral examples that your application may need. Also examples for using free RTOS, passive touch, that file system, and USB. Now, different protocols or different concurrent protocols will require different encrypted stacks to be loaded on the WB. 
the release notes HTML file within the binaries folder in the kubewb details each stack requirement. And the cube programmer makes it super easy to update that now. And within each kubewb firmware example, you'll find full application related source code in the core folder. One super useful bonus cube tool is the STM32 Cube Monitor Power. This is a real-time current measurement tool that does require a dedicated hardware board, uh, shown on the left for $70, the XNucleo LPM01A. And this is really great for doing real-time low power measurements of your application. With the powerful free Cube Tool ecosystem from ST, CubeMX for configuration, Cube Programmer, Cube Monitor tools for test and measurement, and the free Cube IDE GCC-based compiler or a commercial compiler of your choosing, you have an easy to grasp iterative design cycle of continuous improvement of your next wireless creation. Here's a quick look at how to navigate ST.com, quickly get to the wireless MCU pages to navigate the different documents, lateral, and tool downloads for the STM32WB. There are lots of great app notes for the WB constantly being updated, covering all facets of hardware design, low power considerations, security, over the air firmware updates, detailed firmware descriptions, and getting you up to speed on different topologies such as Bluetooth low energy mesh. I would also recommend grabbing the user manual for the Nucleo kit, printing out the schematics and pinout diagrams, quickly get your wireless creation configured and wired up. Now, if you're familiar with the client-server relationship of a BLE GAT connection, here's another interesting capability of the WB. It can maintain up to eight link layer state machines. Here's an example of such a multi-role device in which the router device on the left maintains three link layer states. It's a server to the smartphone client and clients to two server end device Nucleo or dongle boards. The projects for each role shown here are available in KubeWB as shown. The smartphone role can also be done as another Nucleo board. Now let's take a look at some other interesting use cases possible with the WB and some associated ST products and tools, such as NFC pairing. ST has lots of great NFC reader and tag technologies and products. Some of the most interesting I've found are the dynamic tag devices, such as the ST25DV family. You can use a smartphone or NFC reader to not only communicate, but also power the device with its 13 megahertz carrier. On the other end of these devices is a traditional I2C interface, which can be used to read and write to the tag, similar to E squared prom. And the tag also has a field detect signal that can be used to wake up the WB from low power modes. This is a great solution for out of band pairing and bonding used when a secure BLE connection is needed, and also assignment of a device's Bluetooth device address sometimes called its MAC address. We get a lot of questions if you can use an external power amplifier with the WB, typically in applications where it may be enclosed in metal. The answer is yes. Let's take a look. We currently have a reference design using the Skyworks Sky 66118-11, which gives up to plus 20 dBm output. There's support in the KubeWB using port, port PV0, which is set as an alternate function to enable the PA. We have reference design Gerber files, and an app node is coming. Although Bluetooth 5 does not support native audio, we do have solutions for audio streaming on the WB. With the software function pack shown here available at st.com, the CCAO2M2X Nucleo MEMS microphone shield attached to our WB Nucleo board. We have all the pieces we need to do PDM to PCM conversion, Opus audio encode and decode, custom BLE audio service, and USB audio class support to demonstrate this full duplex 
16 k bit per second streaming audio solution. Just wouldn't be complete without mentioning all of ST's great environmental and motion mem sensor technologies. Here's the function pack that integrates all these great new mem sensors available on the new IKS 01A3 sensor shield. You'll probably also want to grab the STBLE sensor app from the App Store or Google Play to demonstrate all these great features. There's lots of great source code to use all these great sensors in your own wireless application. While we don't incorporate a lot of the high-end TFT display controller and hardware accelerator technologies found on higher tier STM32s, we do have the simple LCD glass driver and some other capabilities with certain TFT LCD modules. Let's take a look. With a large amount of flash and SRAM on the WB, even while running a wireless stack, we have all the capabilities we need to stream quad spy data from a few spy flash using DMA to a traditional SPI interface to a quarter VGA module as shown here. Thanks for your time today, and I hope you learned a bit more in the short time available about this great new wireless addition to the STM32 microcontroller family. Stay tuned for a new hands-on wireless workshop series coming to a city near you. And also go check out the new STM32WL sub-gigahertz wireless MCU family, hitting production soon.